Welcome to Toffee TV. We are reacting to Fahad Nashiri's comments, Baz. Once again, he is being on with Jim White, but this time he didn't text. Didn't text. No, 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 no. He rung him. He's got, he's got, Jim has the ability to speak to him now. Jim White met Fahad for the first time on Saturday at Chelsea with, with who else? Who else was there? Who? Oshmanov. Oshmanov was there. I'm just going to leave that there. It's going to put it down on the table and I'm just going to leave it there. Um, he rung in to his talk sport show today to have a little conversation with him. Um, now, we've been a bit critical of him using this form of. I'm trying to think of the right word. Communication. Communication. Good good word. Say communicate. See how that way. Um, communication, not going through the. not throwing through the club. But. I suppose this is his preferred way. He likes to go through a national. He's got a trusted national media source. Uh, Jim White has done some work for Everton as well, mm. do, uh, you know, presenting and stuff like that. So it's not in Jim's. It's not in Jim's. Uh, no need for it to abuse it, is there? Really? No, Plus, it, you wouldn't think he would anyway. He's a respected journalist. It's within his interest to keep it. Exactly, it is isn't it within his interest, especially when you've got him phoning up and sharing these kind of comments. Now, so for, so forget about any you know that kind of thing about not going through Everton. This is what he wants to do, so that's fair enough. He rung up today. Very interesting, very very interesting um, conversation he had about Everton. Very well timed, I thought as well, because that was that's the first thing I wanted to speak to. You. Five nil defeat. The, the league table. There's someone at the top of it that isn't that good. No game for a couple of weeks. Could be a very sort of, could be a long couple of weeks. But by doing this interview, he's changed the narrative, hasn't he, of, of, of the next couple of weeks and what fans are talking about. Yeah, I mean, that's you being ultra cynical. No, him, no, that's not being, being cynical. really clever. No, I mean, listen, at any time, you're always looking, you pick your moments at, you know, uh, you pick your moments at the right time, or you hope you do. We with a without giving the previous regime a kicking on occasions like that when we suffered a bad defeat, it was silence. The silence would, would be deafening mm. from within the club. So I'm I'm quite happy that he's bounced out today and gone. You know what? Yeah, we did. We got smashed at the weekend, and it was terrible. And he said that he was hurt. You know, it annoyed him and everything else. But he's looking at the bigger picture, and he's come out and he's chosen to use Jim White. This is a journalist who's on whether we like them or not, the biggest sports station. Mm. Um, two of, the, two two of the, the biggest sports station with that medium and then those listeners. And he's the biggest sort of He's the biggest star. Yeah, if that's what you want to call yeah. it. So, Mishiri obviously has identified that and thought this is someone who I will communicate through. You know, and it was good to hear him actually giving a, a live conversation, a yeah. phone conversation, rather than just a tribute and comments. So, <clears throat> yeah. It was good to hear that and I've got the stuff on the phone. But what's the first thing said. that... What's the first thing that jumps out to you about the con about the interview? Just how committed I think he is to Everton. Yeah. I think he certainly sounded like someone who knows what he wants. He spoke about being his involvement to Arsenal um, as, a, as a minor shareholder and he, him now being at the forefront mm. of Everton, you know, the man who's in control, how determined he is to deliver things he wants. He wanted, you know, to identifying a, a big name manager, mm. want to go through with that. And progressing the club financially, globally, yeah. giving them a stadium and players. It, it just sounded a very committed man it, it, who wants Everton to do well and be up there. Yeah, and you know, he, he said um he said he wanted a star. Did it was it a star on the touchline and Yeah, a star because of Hollywood. Hollywood of the North West. Yeah, it's a Holly football in football in the North West is the Hollywood of We needed a star to stand. We needed a star to stand. On the he said um the club now he said death free mm. he said he got rid of all the debts yeah. he said he's progressing with the stadium as well and he said we're, he had where, we, we're where we want to be yeah so the they've stadium. identified the they've identified where they want to go mm. we've seen the pictures I think we all know where he wants to go we all know where we want to go it's Bramley Moore Dock um, and, and he said he's done the hard work and he said he's put the club in a position where they can do that now, mm. where it's on their terms, where they yeah, don't have to yeah. worry about anyone else. And he's putting the money because what? Because obviously, what he said was that 
he said in the summer he, come in, he wanted to buy people so he couldn't necessarily do that because of the financial fair play he said the club don't make enough money he said that's, yeah, and that's obviously that's point. what we've been talking about for years but he said we have to have a new stadium because we have to start generating our own money he said that the money we make is not good enough whether it be stadium or marketing as well and that's another thing I suppose behind closed doors that fans don't see getting better sponsorship deals getting a better shirt sponsor getting people to start paying through the nose for a, a brand and not just accepting any old sponsorship deal but going out there and going this is what we can offer you this is what you're going to offer us and and all these deals starting a bigger I found, I found it was really interesting when he was speaking about that I think it's on terms of backing managers and stuff like that he's talking about it's getting difficult the landscape because a lot of clubs are getting new kit deals 900 million mm. to a billion so we know how difficult it is this is a fella that knows what other clubs are getting for kit deals so when he has a look on me you get three and a half quid and a, a Twix from our kit it's sponsors it's a nice Twix though oh it is a nice it's not a it's not a, it's not it's a, not a Jar one you know it's what I nice mean ones. but it, it's it's good that he knows that so he's looking out thinking well I'm going our brand should be bigger we should be getting more well, yeah, and they're chasing those and the other thing about that is I mean you know you're seeing a lot of movements at the moment there's a lot of rumours that um, Man City are leaving Nike to go to Under Armour because Chelsea have just got a massive deal with, with, with Nike mm -hmm. and Tottenham are leaving Under Armour because Nike are coming in for them and because Paris Saint-Germain are getting a massive deal off Nike uh, oh, sorry they want a massive deal off Nike because they've heard what Chelsea's got they're all reacting to each other and yeah. we're just sitting there going this is all right, isn't it? You know, we're still getting that money from Umbro we did, uh, or from Kitbag and all that. They're chasing now. They're saying, "Hang on, he's getting this much." Yeah, yeah. And this is one of the big frustrations that we've had for a long time, a lot longer than we've been doing this. Mm -hmm. Is that we used to sit there and go, "Hang on, Tottenham have just got this massive deal, and yet we're just sitting here doing nothing." Doing nothing. And, and, and that was at a time when we were more tired. Yeah, and that's table. and what you see now is a man saying, "Hang on, no, 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 we'll we're going to even negotiate this deal mm -hmm. because." They're paying them now, so the market's moved. Why should we sit there and, and take this? You know, the market's moved. We we need to react with it. No, we're gonna go and we negotiate and that all contract. All of that has knock-on effects. So all of that, you get more sponsorship. You get, you know, we know Chang will be gone. Chang will be gone in the summer. Or Chang have to give us a big. No, Chang will be gone. Okay. And then there'll be big money, big money coming in from that. Big money from. You sound like Trump. Yeah, man. <laughs> no, you do that. But we build a uh, lot of uh, us. Uh, 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 it's going to be great. It's going to be great. No, no. We're going to get rid of Chang. We're going to replace Chang with. Um, I never said. What I'm saying to you is. And <laughs> there will be more money coming in. And that money then goes in to the way you can then put more yep. money into wages, which means you can get better plays. He said, he's, he's more or less said all this today. That, yeah. That's what it's about. Yes, he said 47 million for Cooler Bally. What's yeah. for, he said? What's forty-seven yeah. million? He said it was it's monopoly money. It's monopoly money. So he knows what he wants to do, and he knows. But you know, we tried to get to Soko. All these people who saying we only had the, the stones money. Mm. There was money there. He knows. He was frustrated by that. And this is how you turn it on. This is how we go forward. You know, when Evertonians today should be after Saturday's debacle mm. today, they should feel a lot brighter that we may, we are moving in. Well, I said area. this. Sort of said this. I've said this in the final word. It's about the bigger picture, isn't it? Saturday's just one thing. It's one mm. game with a lot of players that hopefully the manager will move on. And you get you've got this side of it now, and the side of it is Farah Mashiri saying we've got the money to compete. We have to just. But it's not about having the money. Sorry, it's about we know how to get the money mm. because we know we know Man City for 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 a start. It's not an endless pot. But what they've done really, really well, and what Chelsea have been doing in the last four or five years, is moving things round and moving the money round. And City have got a stadium sponsor by Etihad, who is also owned by the owner, and they've been very cleverly manipulating the, the football. That's where we are now, and we've mm. got to start manipulating. We've got to have a stadium, and then you get the naming rights, and then you move it all round. And the money, and the money ends up on the pitch. And that's yeah. another thing he said today. He said, "My job." is to get the money to give to the manager to make a better team mm. and that's the end of that's it now it, I know yeah. we've heard that from other people and you have to just trust the man but that's what you want to hear as a as a, as a, it, as a, as a if, supporter even if you want to stay cautious you know you've got to look and say he's cleared the debt mm. we've been saddled with the debt they're making ground on a ground yeah. they're actually moving forward towards the stadium now 18 months ago we just said listen we're going to get someone in the short term but he's going to give us a stadium on the dock 
but he's only going to put a little bit onto the team. We'd have all been made up. This fella wants to build a team that wins mm. things as well, and it's difficult to do it because there's only there's only one league, there's only one FA Cup, there's only a League Cup. You know, there's, there's so few cups to win, and that many teams yeah. want them. But you give yourself a chance by improving everything, and that's what he's. But what he, uh, what he's, but but I think what we've seen in the Premier League this season, and what we're starting to see is that there is only one league, and there's but. But you've got, you, you've got to be part of that top league. You've mm. got to be part of that top echelon. Which look, we're seventh, and we haven't even been done that well. I mean, we've won games, but you know what I mean. We're seventh. We're, we're hanging in there. But you look at those teams above, and you look at the calibre, and you look at what Chelsea did to us, and you go, mm. "That's where we've got to be." Yeah. And to to get that, you need money, and to, you need to make money. And that's what he's saying. He's you know that's what ultimately he's saying is that I know how to make money for this club. Mm. But we have to do things. I mean, it's not rocket science. We always knew we needed a new stadium. We needed an investor to to do well, that. He, he said, Bill Ken, I was just reading it there. He said, Bill Ken, I kept the club for 19 years with no money. Mm. And that's remarkable. But but I'm here with the money. You know, he's here with the money. And that's, that's the that's the thing. And, and things with name and rights and things with sponsors, if, if it goes where we think it's going to be, and it's on the Liverpool City waterfront, and you know you have your sponsors on the side of the stadium television everything it's it's better than trying to stick something on Goodison Road and going yeah we'll put your thing on Goodison Road whereas Liverpool yeah. city centre the city's sprawling and growing and you're more attractive and, and the other thing about it is he's, he knows I think he's the kind of man who knows the worth of everything so you know you mentioned there if he he might buy he might look at the land and go, well, we'll buy that extra little bit there and someone will build their hotel on that and we'll get extra money for that and all that. Like, he's probably thinking all those steps ahead. He said he's going to provide a ground that is... Rewarding. fans these Reward the fans, basically the fans' loyalty for what, you know... We've we, repaid the debts, we're free to do what we want and we have the finances to do it. We visited Liverpool with Bill a few weeks ago on the mayor. We will. We are committed. I can assure, reassure the fans. They will have a stadium that rewards their loyalty and their passion for the club. Mm. That's my key aim. Because he knows it's all about a stadium. Yeah. He knows it's about cutting through all the crap and getting to a stadium. And yeah. I'm not saying the club haven't known that for the last ten years. Of course they've known that, but they've gone about it the wrong way. Because what they've basically done is we need a new ground, but we're willing to like let let most of it be someone else's where this mm. fella's going hang on no we need a ground it needs to be ours we need to control everything that goes on around it and then we make all the money mm. and then that puts us on a same footing as or near enough the same footing as a lot of those other clubs because it's all right saying financial fair play but it's not financial fair play is it because what financial fair play is basically done is allow those top teams to just pull the bridge the drawbridge up yeah, behind yeah. them and just go we're, we're, there's like, we're all right we're all right yeah, yeah. I and mean, I know we can't spend loads of money um, and but we're still we're still we're still a Champions League team so there's only five or six of us fighting for four places mm -hmm. so most years we're going to be sad right, yeah. whereas we beforehand used to be able to be like Blackburn and Rovers we yeah. didn't buy into that yeah, yeah. City did they did, yeah, City bought into it, but now they've gone, oh, this is all right, we don't have to worry, we'll continue making money, because there's only actually four or five of us who'll do it, who'll do it or six of us, and because we're in the Champions League most years, we get those big sponsorship deals, and we have to breach that gap, and yeah, that's the first yeah. thing people have got to remember, you've got to breach that gap first, you have to get on the same foot as them, and then fight your way into that, yeah, and that is, yeah. without a ground, that's impossible. Yeah, so, most definitely. He's listened to Steph in the right direction. It's great for me. It's great that he's come out today mm. and had this conversation. He said all the right things. What you want him to say? I was the ground's fantastic, and that's so important for our future. But it, it was it was good the fact that he was talking about backing the manager. It was nice the fact that he said Ronald Cuban's ruthless. Mm. Just the kind of person I like. He said what we need. He's saying all of the things he wants in business. What about his comments about Roberto Martinez? Basically promising. Romelu Lukaku, John. I mean, if you got the actual quote there, because I don't want to. He wanna... doesn't say about Luke. He, what he says here is this is what he talked about John Stones. The boy wanted to go. Martinez had promised him that he'd go the following year. I still didn't let him go until the manager said he could go. At the end of the day, I do what the manager wants. What's 47 and a half million? We wanted to buy Kula Bali from Napoli. They wanted 60 million. Every defender in Europe now is 50 million. It's Monopoly. We competed with Chelsea. We went right to the asking price, but the club didn't sell. Neither to us nor Chelsea. The manager had seven names. We got four of them. He wanted box-to-box -box midfielder. He went for Sissoko. He chose Tottenham because of the Champions League. He wanted Lucas Perez. And Arsenal came in and snatched them at the last minute. 
he actually mentioned Gabby Adini in the actual interview. He mm. said Napoli wouldn't sell him. Uh, and I know he said they had three stars at the club, which were Lukaku, Barkley, and Stones. That had been promised that had been. So, I don't know whether he meant the three of them had mm. been. Certainly not Ross. I think he meant Romelu. And he mentioned because he said, I made sure I kept Romelu. Mm. But I think he was saying he, Lukaku had been promised he could go and sell the It's from that, though, isn't it? Though that a manager would promise. And I'm sure it goes on elsewhere. I'm not throwing. Uh, uh, it's just interesting that. I don't think you should promise players anything. No, no. Like that, because it's about them doing the job. You're happy to sign a contract for five years for a lot of money. Then, yeah. if the club wants you for five years, you stay. Interesting stuff, but at least, you know, even if he's. <laughs> obviously, we've heard before, Ronald Koeman's talked Romelu Lukaku round and stuff. Funny enough, Romelu Lukaku was asked in his first Belgian press conference today. I guess what he was asked. Does he want to move to Chelsea? Does basically doesn't want to leave Everton. Yeah. Or was he today? Yeah, basically, again? yeah. And what did he say? I don't know. Um hopefully it was a better answer than normally. But yeah. um yeah, that was the first question apparently what he was asking. But but it's really positive and I, I, I do find it really interesting that I know people will be like, why is he speak and I've seen a few people saying, Why is he why is he saying anything? And he's letting too much out the bag by revealing things. But we, we knew about Kula Bally in the summer, didn't yeah, we? We said it loads of times on here. Sure. Why aren't you listening listening? Um because people don't want to believe. Yeah, that that's something. That's it. Yeah, um, but it's really, I, and I just think it's really interesting because you mentioned before. I remember we got beat by Wigan in the FA Cup, mm. and Everton didn't tweet for four days. Mm. <laughs> that was. Do you know? Is that what you want? Do you want really the club to be like that and not say anything, and like players not say anything, or do you want them to come out and be? Like grown ups about no, the whole Koeman situation. Tweeted Saturday night, didn't he? Said, sorry for the fans, we were we were second, we were outclassed in every department. You know, and, we'll, and Jan Klutenberg said the same thing, yeah. we work hard on the training ground, we get back, you know, and all of that. And that's the that's what you're looking for, your poppy. I know, I, I, the, no, I've just realised my poppy's fe- look, there's, there's the, the, pin. The, there's the pin, it's fell off. So, no fume at me because he's got one of my, and I have He it. has got one. It's just fell off, there's the pin, and I have a pop, uh, yeah. But I sit down, it's all right. <laughs> it <laughs> fell off somewhere. Um, but I think it's really, really, I think it's really clever though that he's come out today. And yeah. it might be coincidental because Jim White said the first time they met face to face was on Saturday. Let's be honest, Jim probably said to him, I'll phone you on Monday because you're not exactly. going to address the thing. Exactly, so, gone, yeah, right. so that's really clever. And I think it's really clever because I looked at Twitter and the last few days it's been, you know, fume, 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 mm. fume, fume. Look at today and it was like, we're moving forward. We're moving forward. Forget about Saturday. And we've said this in the final word about the players on the pitch. Now we're saying about things that are going off the pitch. This man seems to have a grasp of what's going on. Things and are changing. Things are changing. And it'd be great. I know we all want to be like, announce the ground. But if it's not done, you can't announce it. Do you know what I mean? And it, But things are going the right way. And they've got the tools now. In the past, they've been waiting for everything else. And listen, on the ground, of course, they're waiting for everyone else. They don't own the ground. They're waiting to. It's like when you buy a house. We're waiting for money, and we didn't have money. No, it's we're all right. It's great saying I'm working one day a week on the new stadium. Mm. I can work one day a week on a, a thirty-room mansion, but if I haven't got yeah. the money to buy it, it means nothing. I work one day a week on this. Yeah, <laughs> I work a job and then another. Oh, but it's like I don't have a job. Unbelievable. Um, anyway. So it's really positive. Yeah, yeah. Let us know what you think in the comments about what Farhad Mashiri's had to say today. The first time, first prop. It's the first proper interview because the only yeah. thing we've heard before and was him say about four words and then look at Bill Kenway dead weirdly when he said what a manager about uh, Roberto Man. I was like, he knew, he knew he at the time. It was like that day. He's gone. Mm. Uh, <laughs> he knew. So tell us what you think in the comments about this. Are you really positive or you want to? Miserable down are people who were like, What are you doing? What are you doing, lad? Why are you saying that? Can't you just keep his mouth shut till it's all done? There are people like that out there. You know you everyone's are. entitled to them. No, own view. I know. And that's why I'm asking. Tell us what you think in you in the comments. We think it's positive. Thanks for watching Toffee TV. We'll see you later.